Hello and welcome to another Sutton Brain Hub video. Firstly, let's remember that the cerebellum is located at the back of the brain under the occipital and temporal lobes of the cerebral cortex, and that it's involved in the coordination of movements as well as in maintaining balance and posture. Lesions to the cerebellum can therefore result in incoordination of movements, which is known as ataxia, imprecision of movements, which is known as dysmetria, difficulty with rapid alternating movements, which is called dystidokinesia, trunkle and gait instability, as well as difficulty with articulation of speech, which is called dysarthria. The cerebellum can be broadly categorised into three major anatomical structures. The midline cerebellum, which includes the vermis, the vestibulocerebellum, which is made from the flocculus, nodulus and the paravermis, and the two cerebellar hemispheres. Cerebellar ataxia can be categorised based on the anatomical areas of the cerebellum affected, as this will determine the symptoms that the patient elicits. However, there is significant clinical overlap. Firstly, let's consider the symptoms if the cerebellar hemispheres are damaged. The hemispheres are primarily concerned with the control of the limbs. Therefore, damage to the hemispheres most commonly results in dysmetria, which if you remember is imprecision of movements, and in this case, the movements of the limbs. Damage to the hemispheres may also cause an intention tremor, dystidokinesia, and slurred staccato speech. There are some specific tests that you can perform to test for these signs. These tests include asking the patient to rapidly pronate and supinate their forearm and hand onto their other hand to test for dystidokinesia. Alternatively, if it is the vermis which is primarily damaged, this will lead to truncal and gait instability, as the vermis controls coordination of the middle of the body. Patients with damage to this area tend to fall when standing with their feet together. They may also complain of a sensation of disequilibrium and may not be able to sit without supporting themselves with their arms due to their trunkal ataxia. Finally, damage to the vestibulocerebellum, referred to here as the floccular nodular lobe, often results in posterior instability and nystagmus. The nystagmus is often more obvious when looking towards the side of the lesion, although nystagmus in all directions is usually seen. Due to the involvement in ocular motor and vestibular function, cerebellar lesions in this area can also result in vertigo, nausea and vomiting. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.